Hello, this is Robin Polson with Texas Instruments, and this video will go over the more detailed calculator use for the second AP Stats office hours with the Old Faithful problem. So here is our problem. The Starnes family visited Yellowstone National Park in hopes of seeing the Old Faithful geyser erupt. When they pulled into the parking lot near Old Faithful, a large crowd of people was headed back to their cars from the geyser. Old Faithful had just finished erupting. The Starnes family wondered how long they would have to wait until the next eruption. Fortunately, they had collected data on a random sample of 20 Old Faithful eruptions from the previous week, including the wait time until the next eruption in minutes. Like last time, I'll show you how to approach this problem with both the Inspire and the 84CE. First, we'll talk about the Inspire. Here is the raw data from the random sample of 20 Old Faithful eruptions. Remember, this data and all the files you might need are available on the website after the live broadcast. Here is my Inspire. On my Inspire, I will start a new document. And the first thing I need to do is add a Lists and Spreadsheets page. Remember on the Inspire, you want to name your lists. I chose Dure Last for the duration of the last eruptions and Time Next for Time Until the Next Eruptions. Carefully enter your data and we'll come back. When you finish entering your data into your list and spreadsheet page, make sure you press enter after your last data value to make it stick. Then we'll add a new page. So control doc. And here we'll choose data and statistics number five to see a picture of the data that's in our list and spreadsheet page. Now you'll hover near the X axis and choose your independent variable. Click. Here, that's the duration of our last. And you immediately get a dot plot. Then we'll hover near our Y axis, click to add variable, and that is time until next. And my points are immediately moved into the appropriate scatter plot. Now we want to find the equation of the regression line and see the equation of the regression line. So we'll press menu, analyze, Choose regression number six, and number two, show linear a plus bx. Immediately, you see the line and the associated equation. Now, we're going to also want to see our r and r square values. So let's add a calculator page, control doc, number one calculator page. Here we'll press menu, remembering that we're in statistics. And we're going to do some stat calculations. Linear regression number four, a plus bx. Define those variables. Your x list was duration of last. Your y list, time next. You can leave everything else alone and tab and choose OK. Now on your calculator screen, you can confirm your A and your B coefficients, and you also have your R squared and your R values. Now, of course, we need to have a residual plot. So let's add a data and statistics page. And here, we're going to hover near our x-axis, and again, choose our independent variable, duration of last. There's our dot plot again. But now, when we hover at our y-axis, notice we have some statistical analysis in lists. Here we want stat.resid for the residuals. Now we have a nice random looking residual plot that we can analyze. Finally, we might want to get some of our other analysis values. So let's do a linear regression t-test. We'll add a calculator page. Again, we press menu, statistics, stat tests, and we'll do a linear regression t-test, choice A. Again, define your lists, your X list, duration of last, your Y list, time next. You can save your regression equation to a separate function, keep your frequency list at one, your alternative hypothesis is not equal to zero, tab 
to OK and click. So here you see a deeper analysis, and as you scroll around, there's your t-value, degrees of freedom, s, standard error of slope, and your r and r squared are farther down as you scroll. Now let's do the same thing on the TI-84 plus CE. Again, you'll need to enter your data into your lists. So you'll press stat, edit, and there are your lists. Let's go over to list one, enter your duration data. List two, we'll enter our wait time data. And we'll come back at the end. After you've entered your data into your lists, again, making sure you press enter after your last data value to make it stick, we'll want to make a scatter plot. So we're going to press second y equals for stat plot. Choose number one. We'll turn that plot on and arrow down to choose our scatter plot type. Your X list is list one, Y list list two. You can choose whichever mark and color you'd like. And now zoom nine for your scatter plot. At this point, we want to find the line of best fit as well as its equation. So in the mode menu, we're going to make sure our stat diagnostics are on. So we're going to scroll down toward the bottom and turn our stat diagnostics on. And then we're going to press stat, arrow to calculate. Choose number eight, linear regression, A plus BX. Our X list is list one, Y list list two. We can leave the frequency list blank. We'll store our regression equation in Y1. Now to do that, we can alpha y equals to get to quick menus and notice there's y var there that means there's a hot key under tr above trace we'll choose number one y1 and now we'll arrow down and press enter on calculate now because we stored our equation in y1 when i press graph there is the picture of the line of best fit on top of my scatter plot now we want to make a residual plot so from here, we'll press second y equals. Go back to plot one. Choose our scatter plot. Still, our x list is still list one, but our y list now will be residual. And to get there, we're going to say second stat. And as you, if you up arrow, you'll see your last choice is a residual list. Press enter to choose residuals. Again, choose your mark and your color. And press zoom nine. And there is your residual plot. Finally, you want to get some of those other values from the computer regression output, including your S. So we'll do stat, choose tests, find our linear regression t-test, which here is choice F. Our X list and Y list stay list one and list two. Our frequency stays one. We need to choose our null hypothesis to be not equal to zero. We don't need to store our regression equation. Go to calculate, press enter. There are all of your other values. And if you arrow down, you'll still see your R and R squared values.